military guys here. Hey, what is going on, everybody? Hey, I want to help you. A couple of pointers. Juan, you as well. A couple of you guys out there were asking about the Turkish get ups and some things like that. So for tomorrow's workout, it's that nice strip, it's that real nice split strength circuit. We got a couple real hard moves like the Turkish get up, a bunch of the different plank variations like the reverse plank and things of that nature. Um, this time, because with Jay and what we're just doing with him and the fun little four week body weight workout thing that him and Juan are coming and doing with us, really the idea is just to get Jay kind of fired up and moving and going. So with some of these, all these body weight are just really aimed to strengthen the core, get his motor skills moving and going, proprioception and things like that, okay? Um, so what I want you guys to think with coming up for tomorrow's workout with the planks, especially the reverse plank. A few people are asking about the shoulders and any of the pains feeling them in there. A few other people have also asked that they can't get the hip all the way up. So I'll demonstrate and show a couple of different ways to maybe modify for that or to just get what we can. So I know with some people, if we come into this position and we're seated right here, and especially if you have elbow issues or shoulder issues or rotators, or let's say like you have a real bad, like just the hip isn't really firing or it's not going crazy, and that's okay. So what you wanna do is with the hands, I tell everyone, just take them and kinda lie yourself back to where you can and place the arms to where you can. With some people it's wider, with some it's here. It's okay, you get them to where you can. Have your heels dug into the ground with the toes up, okay? Literally, your object is just going to be to squeeze the glutes and lift the body as high as you can. Now, I know for some, you might squeeze and you get here. I know for some of you guys, if it's like the first time we've ever had to do things like this, you might lift up and fall back down, lift up and fall back down, and that's okay. You get to where you can with it. Lift and hold and just aim to get like a very stiff board going from the ankle all the way up to the shoulder. Now, I know if it's really stretched out or we're having some problems with it, you might feel like a little overt stretch in the front part of it. And yes, of course, if we have any like major surgeries or major, major reasons why you were told by a doctor not to put your hands behind your back in a position like that, I want it otherwise, okay? So give it a shot if you can. If the doctor says no, well then obviously don't. Now the Turkish get up was a real big one we've been going over and talking about. Now the Turkish get up is a very long move. It's a very full body move. Great for stabilization. Great for muscle coordination. Great for muscular endurance because you have to support a weight for a very long time while moving your body through different planes of motion, okay? But the issue is, is usually the Turkish get up, I always teach it first body weight. And then I start to add weight. But also further from there, I split it into twos. I do a half a get up and then I do the full get up, okay? Then I start working the get downs for the individuals that want to go that route. But for the use of Jay, we're just trying to get movement from upper body to lower body. So with the Turkish get up, some of the questions were people feeling weird with the hands and also what the hand in the air was for. So when you're lying on the back, the hand that's in the air stacked over, that's technically where a weight would be. But because we're doing it body weight, you're just holding your arm there, there's just no weight there, okay? Now the big purpose with this one, when we go to initially crunch up and you're in the position where the legs bent, the one is straight and your arms stacked, your elbows here, when you go to start, all you want to do is stare at your weight, crunch up, getting your body weight up to the elbow, where the elbow and the palm are still in contact with the floor. Then you're going to push off the palm, extending the elbow, so that you start now getting higher off the ground. At that point is when you squeeze the glutes and extend the hip further. The reason why we do this with the reverse plank is because with the hip extension, it's the same thing. We're trying to work on just that real nice, strong, isometric hip extension, nice fun strength of the glute to get the body moving, you know. But sometimes when we really think about strength, Strength is strength, yes, but having a real nice foundation is what gets you really strong with other stuff. And some basics like just hip extension or being able to squat and lunge or be in a union position like this really is beneficial, okay? So this is one of the reasons why we have it for Jay. So for everybody, just to have a few cues, what you're doing when you're here in this Turkish get up position is I'm just lying down. My leg is at about 45 degrees. 
my foot is just bent and I, I, I have it as close to my bum as I can, but not too, too close, okay? You will relax that. Now the knee that's bent, that is gonna be the arm with the weight, okay? And what always works when I teach anybody this, whether it's a regular person, body weight, or an athlete, just stare at the weight, be in contact with it, okay? Focus on being secure and stable at the shoulder joint. Now from this position, you are going to crunch up to your elbow. Notice my palm and my elbow are still in contact, but at this point, I'm still staring at the weight in my hand. You will then push up from the elbow to the palm. Notice now my whole arm's extended, my foot is dug in here, and now I have three points of contact. One, two, and three. And from this position, you'll squeeze the glutes to extend the hip. Now the reason why we do this is because the other part of the Turkish get up after this is when you swing the leg around, okay? But for all intents and purposes, what we're doing for the actual workout, we don't do that. So just focus on the first three parts of it. Crunch up, elbow up, hip up. Crunch up, elbow up, hip up. Try to make, try to not reposition the hands or the legs a whole bunch throughout the lift. Try to keep them all in the same spots you start at and move the body within the planes of motion you can. I know at first and for a week, the hands will reposition. Not a problem. I know sometimes you might feel like, what the am I doing? Why this? Not a problem. And the reason why is if you look at the Turkish get up in all parts of it, you have seven main, main movements to the human body. It lunges, it squats, you sit on the toilet every day, it hinges, you have to pick up things from the floor. If you got kids, you gotta chase them around, pick them up from the floor. Do you wanna hurt your back? Do you wanna use your hip, okay? You're meant to push stuff away from you, locked out. You're meant to pull stuff to you, they're meant to pull up, it's bringing weight to you, but you're also meant to twist. Your body can twist, okay? It does have a spine and we are stacked on like so with multiple muscles that bring us in and out of all different types of range of motion. That's why something like the Turkish get up is just very functional. So if we go to do something like that and we're literally having that much of an issue, that's how much coordination for our body we have to work on. So that's why we have them in there. So coming up now, now the numbers are going up. Remember the first week, we only started with the half the get up, five per side. Then the second week, me and Jay did eight per side. It was doing good, he was feeling nice and burnt, nice and strong, but he was making through. This week we're moving up to, oh, 10 half get ups per side. So now the numbers go up. So it'll be a little bit harder, the abs, the whole core system, the hips, they'll start getting sore, but it's okay. Now, you guys all know how to do the eye rise and tease. We have another ab movement thrown in there also for tomorrow, but I'll coach that as we get there for it. Um, and then our variation for tomorrow's burpees, because normally we have some kind of burpee at the end of this day. So this time we have what's called a running burpee. So literally all that a running burpee is, is we're going to do all parts of a normal burpee. You're going to drop down to the floor, do the push-up. Kick your feet in, come up. But instead of jumping and clapping, you're gonna run in place 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Drop right back down, do the push up again. Come up, these are called running burpees. So it's just another variation of burpee. Makes it a little harder, a little funner, but because we're doing a strength circuit tomorrow, we are not going to be doing for interval time, we're gonna do reps. So, everybody, have a good fun night tonight. Make sure you get some sleep, get ready. 8 a.m. tomorrow, me and Juanito will be going live. Jay will also be logging on. He'll be watching us, though, from his trip up to New York. Be safe, guys. If everybody you have any questions, remember, hit me up in the inbox. That's why I'm doing these videos, to explain little movements like this. For those of you that have asked questions, send me any message. I don't care. I'll answer anything. There's no such thing as a dumb question. You let me know, I will help all you guys. Much love. You guys stay safe. Remember, create your future.